Once upon a time there was a young boy named Jack who loved exploring. One day while playing in the woods behind his house, he stumbled upon a strange-looking tree. This tree had a very wide trunk and its branches stretched up so high they seemed to touch the sky. Jack walked all around the tree looking for something unusual. He knocked on the tree trunk and it sounded hollow. He pushed and prodded, looking for some way to open it. Suddenly he noticed a small hole near the bottom that was just big enough for him to crawl through. Taking a deep breath, Jack got down on his hands and knees and crawled inside. He realized he was in a tunnel that led underground. It was dark and cramped at first, but the further he went, the bigger the tunnel became. Soon Jack was able to stand up fully and walk normally. The tunnel began to slope upward and Jack saw a bright light ahead. Jack quickened his pace, half excited and half afraid of what he would find. As he got closer, he had to squint from the bright sunshine pouring in. When he finally stepped out of the tunnel, Jack couldn't believe his eyes. He was standing in a lush green valley surrounded by tall mountains. A sparkling blue waterfall cascaded down the nearest mountainside into a crystal clear stream that flowed through the valley. The trees and flowers were unlike any Jack had seen before. They seemed to glow and glitter as if filled with magic. Tiny mushroom circles dotted the grassy meadows. As Jack walked further into the valley, he noticed small, delicate houses built right into the sides of the hills. They looked like something out of a fairy tale. Suddenly, Jack heard a tiny giggle. He turned around and couldn't believe what he saw. A tiny fairy with shimmering wings was hovering right in front of his face. Jack watched in awe as even more fairies emerged from behind trees and under mushrooms. They surrounded him, chattering excitedly in a language he couldn't understand. They grabbed his hands and pulled him along to the nearest mushroom circle. The fairies motioned for Jack to have a seat on one of the smooth mushroom tops. They presented him with acorn caps full of sweet nectar and flower petal cakes. As Jack drank and ate with delight, the fairies performed dances around him. They made glowing bubbles and images appear with their magic wands. Jack had never tasted anything as delicious as the fairy food or seen such amazing sights. He wondered if he was dreaming. After Jack had his fill, the fairies once again took his hands and led him through the valley. They showed him the crystal clear swimming hole with a slippery slide carved right out of the rock. They took him inside the cozy earth homes built into the hillsides and introduced their fairy friends. Everyone was incredibly friendly and made Jack feel right at home. The fairies taught Jack fairy games like mushroom toss, pinecone bowling, and dewdrop splash. They taught him special fairy dances and songs. Jack had so much fun playing all afternoon. As the sun started to set, the fairies led Jack to a clearing in the woods where a massive feast was set out. There were apple tarts, berry cakes, nut breads, and many other delicious foods. Vines wrapped around the tree trunks glowed with fairy lights. Glow bugs floated through the air like living fireflies. It was the most magical place Jack had ever seen. After the delicious dinner, the fairies gathered around a toadstool stage. Some played beautiful music on handmade instruments of wood, petals, and blades of grass. Others performed scenes from fairy tales with fairy dust trails streaming behind them. Jack sat enchanted by the show. When it ended, the fairies brought out more treats and urged Jack to pick any spot to sleep for the night. Exhausted from the exhilarating day, Jack nestled into a thick patch of clovers. The fairies covered him gently with flower petals to keep him warm. Surrounded by his new fairy friends, Jack had the most restful, pleasant sleep of his life. The next morning, the fairies served Jack a scrumptious breakfast of honey glazed nuts and berries, maple syrup soaked flower petal pancakes, and dewdrop tea. After eating, the fairies led Jack on a hike up one of the valley's mountains. At the top, Jack was amazed to see the valley stretch out below him like a real life fairy painting. It was even more incredible from above. The fairies showed Jack secret caves on the mountainside filled with crystal stalactites and stalagmites. They even let him peek into their fairy mine where they mined for gemstones and precious metals. In a shimmering grotto, hidden hot springs bubbled invitingly, perfect for a relaxing dip. Spending the day exploring the mountains with his new fairy friends was a dream come true.
As the sun started to set, the fairies brought Jack back to the tunnel he had entered through. They hugged and kissed him goodbye, sad to see their new human friend go. Jack thanked them for the most magical time of his life. He promised to come visit again soon. Waving goodbye one final time, Jack crawled through the tunnel until he came back out the other side at the strange hollow tree. He made his way home, overflowing with astonishing stories to tell his family. But Jack wondered if they would even believe half the fairy wonders he had seen. Either way, he would never forget the secret fairy world he discovered or the fairy friends who made him feel so at home there. And Jack knew without a doubt that this was only the first of many extraordinary adventures to come. Once upon a time there was a magical forest filled with tall, ancient trees. The leaves glowed in shades of emerald, jade, and lime green. Tiny fairies flitted amongst the branches and mushrooms dotted the mossy ground. A babbling brook flowed through the deepest parts of the wood. In this forest lived a young elf named Willow. She had chestnut brown hair that flowed down to her waist and bright green eyes that matched the forest around her. Willow loved exploring the woods and learning all about the plants and animals that lived there. One day while walking along a winding forest path, she came across a tiny baby bird that had fallen out of its nest. The poor chick was cheeping pitifully, too young to fly or care for itself. Willow couldn't leave the helpless creature alone. She scooped up the baby bird and decided to take it home. When Willow got back to her cottage at the edge of the woods, she found an old bird's nest and lined it with soft leaves and feathers. She put the chick inside and gave it some crumbs to eat. Don't worry little one, I'll take care of you until you're big enough to go back to your family, she whispered. Over the next few weeks, Willow looked after the baby bird, feeding it worms and berries. Soon its feathers came in, speckled brown and beige. The chick grew bigger and stronger every day. One morning, Willow awoke to find the bird flapping its wings. Look at you, ready to fly away and be free, she said. Willow took the chick back to the forest and placed it in a tall tree near where she'd found it. The bird gave a happy chirp before flapping off into the green woods. Willow waved goodbye, feeling good that she'd helped the little creature. The seasons changed and autumn arrived in the forest. The green leaves turned golden, ruby and amber. It was Willow's favorite time of year. One crisp day, she ventured into a part of the woods she'd never explored before. The trees here grew so close together that their branches tangled up into arches and tunnels Willow wandered through the leafy labyrinth until she came to a dead end. As she turned to head back, an enormous gust of wind swept through and shook the trees violently. Willow heard the wood creaking and cracking. All of a sudden, huge branches crashed down around her, blocking her path. She was trapped. Willow tried with all her might to shove the heavy, twisted limbs out of her way, but it was no use. She was small and the branches were piled high into an impassable barricade. Willow sank down on the forest floor, shivering. It would be nightfall soon and dangerous creatures lurked in these woods after dark. Oh how she wished she hadn't wandered so far from home. The trees loomed over her menacingly and shadows slowly crept through the forest. As darkness fell, Willow heard strange noises surround her, crackling, crunching, snuffling. Her pointed ears twitched nervously at every little sound. She didn't know what kinds of creatures approached in the blackness. Willow pulled her cloak tightly around herself and trembled. She stayed as still and quiet as she could, hardly daring to breathe. The night dragged on endlessly. Willow kept her eyes shut tight, too afraid to look around. She prayed to the forest spirits to keep her safe. Just when she thought she couldn't bear it any longer, Willow noticed the faintest glow through her closed eyelids. Could it be sunrise already? She slowly opened her eyes and gasped. Surrounding her were dozens of tiny fairies. Their magical fairy dust cast a warm, twinkling light over the shadowy branches. The fairies had come to protect her through the darkest night. Willow watched in awe as the fairies flitted about, their tiny wings whirring. They touched the heavy branches blocking Willow's way and suddenly the wood creaked and groaned again. The barricade of limbs began to shift and sway before rising up and carefully setting down again, leaving a clear path ahead. The fairies had saved her. Willow jumped up and laughed joyfully. 
Thank you, she called to the fairies, running back home as the sun came up. She had learned her lesson about wandering too far into the dangerous dark parts of the forest. But she also knew she could rely on the magic of the woods to protect her when she needed it most. The End